well, uh, just for your thoughts on Michael Bennett's situation while you uh, I mean, it's unfortunate. Obviously, I'm um, happy that he made it out. Um, day in the life, though, you know, I'm sure, as he said, um, something that he's been through before, I'm sure, and hopefully he doesn't have to go through again, but it's no amount of money, no amount of fame, no amount of notoriety that could keep you from things like that happening to you. So it's um, just an unfortunate part of, of life. I'm just thankful he made it out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've experienced that. I've been hemmed up, you know, countless times when I was younger. You know, you live in the inner city, that's just how it goes. They're trying to patrol the city, they're trying to keep the city safe. So, um, you know, a black between the, the sizes of 6'4 and 5'3, you know, <laughs> and they're going to get you. Um, but, you know, thankfully I made it out alive, he made it out alive, and, and we moved past it. Um, with support, um, they've, they've, we've always supported our players and supported our guys, and, and that's all you can do is, is support because you know Mike is Mike is literally, you know, sitting, taking a stand, protesting, doing everything he can to to combat the exact thing that he experienced. Um, and people are so worried about him sitting down during the national anthem that they completely miss that message. A lot of times, they they want to be more angry at the 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 action than the message. And that's an unfortunate part of, of the world we live in nowadays. Um, I wish that people would, would, would take it for what it is and make a difference and go out there and try to combat against um, racism, fascism, um, unnecessary violence. Um, you know, a guy being discriminated against, you know, he was doing nothing wrong. I mean, you can't go outside, you can't, can't be out, you can't do this, you know, what can you do? Um, so hopefully people will start to, to, to do the necessary things that, that it takes to make a change. Do you think more teammates might join in the protest? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, it, potentially. Um, but, you know, guys, guys are trying to make a difference in other ways. Um, and I think guys will, will do more to, to press their initiatives and press their foundations and, and donate money and, and, and try their best to make a difference in other ways. because. Um, it started to become apparent that, that you know, kneeling, um, what Colin did, obviously didn't, didn't have much of an impact on what they're, what's going on in, in society. And, um, and Mike's sitting and trying to make a difference, and they're, they're passing judgment and criticizing his actions instead of trying to make a difference and trying to, to do things to change it. Um, so we're just going to continue to look for steps and look for things that we can do to try to, try to change, change society. And, and, Give people more equality. Say that one more time. I, I I wish I knew. If I knew it, I'd be doing it. I'd be doing more. Um, we you know giving money, giving money to different causes, um, and that's everything. That's that's you know giving more money to the police department so that they can they can have more people. You know they can educate better, educate their officers. Um, giving money to to the people who've dealt with this violence, who who've lost sons and and fathers and mothers um, to this violence and, and try to help them. Um, but I have no idea, honestly. If I, if I knew, I promise you I'd be doing, doing as much of that as I could. I, I didn't disagree with him. I disagree with the action, not the message. Right. Um, I guess the uh, action. No, no, it, it, it hasn't, be, but mostly because of this reason, for this reason, it, and it's because people aren't even getting the point. <laughs> you know, he's going out there and make it, making a stand, and people are, you know, you might as well just be saying blah, 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 because people are just seeing you kneel during the national anthem, and they, they're taking that and, and closing their ears, and that's unfortunate. You know, people see the action and then close their ears. You know, the rest is ignorant to, to them, and I wish that would change. Um, I think... His intent was pure. He, he was, he was, he, you know, his heart was pure. He was trying to do the right thing. And, and, but in our society, it's you got to find the right way to do the right thing so people don't close their ears. And that's what we're trying to do. What effect does Mike's incident have a lot? Honestly, a lot of guys have dealt with this throughout their lives. So um, it, we're just happy that he's alive. You know, we're, we're, you know, it's obviously brought awareness to, to the outside world. But for us, it's something that, that a lot of these guys have dealt with. You know, throughout most of their lives, you know, just going out in everyday society, you know, it's going to happen to you at least once or twice in your life and maybe more. Um, 
you just got to respond to it the right way and, and, and try to try to stay calm and try to do everything they tell you to do, and, and hopefully they do the right thing. And, and, you know, thankfully Mike did, and, and, and they did the right thing and allowed him to walk away. Richard, but at the risk of prying into something very personal for you, when was the last time something like that happened to you? Uh, last time, college. College. Um, out in Palo Alto. The east side of Palo Alto is much different than the other side of Palo Alto. And happened to be over there, you know, actually going to get some, some Jamaican food because, you know, they got good Jamaican food over there. Um, and just got hemmed up, wrong place, wrong time. That, you know, I think there was a shooting not too far from where we were and, you know, looked like the suspect, you know, had, had dreadlocks, you know, around, I guess, my build. And, but they let me, they let me go. We had another incident where, where some neighbors, we were actually, you know, they called us anytime they needed help moving stuff at Stanford. Um, you know, some of the donors, you know, very affluent and, and, and wealthy people, if they needed to help moving a big dresser or something, you know, we needed money in our pockets, we couldn't get jobs, you know, NCAA, you can't, you can't do anything. Um, you know, but they give us 50 bucks or so. So we went over there, so I got there first, and you know, it's a neighborhood I'd never been to before, and the house was way, the, the driveway was really long, so I'm, I'm kind of looking around, you know, kind of driving slowly through the neighborhood, and I finally found it, and I drove into the neighborhood. And, you know, knock on the door, I introduce myself, meet the guy. We're sitting there waiting for my teammates, and we come outside to a hard knock, and it's the police out the door. And, you know, guns drawn, you know, and he luckily he comes first. <laughs> he came to the door first because, you know, who knows what happens. And, and he's like, what's going on? And they're like, hands up, hands up, you know, get out. And is there anybody else in the house? And I'm right behind him, so I come out, hands up, you know. I, I've done nothing wrong, but apparently the, poli the uh, neighbors called the police because I looked suspicious and I, they didn't think I, they thought I was uh, robbing the place. So they came with nine police cars, dogs, everything. <laughs> the guy, the guy that owned the place was like apologizing, you know, but he, he didn't do anything wrong. Is it any harder to concentrate on football at all with all this stuff kind of going on these days? I mean, like I said, it's going on your whole life. I <laughs> mean, it's you know, it's something we've always dealt with. I think it's becoming more more prevalent um, to the public and people are starting to see it more, you know, with, with all these camera phones and, and, you know, Mike bringing it to light and, and people are starting to see more and more of it. So I guess um, it's something that's always been there, though. And on call, how, how, are you surprised by this one that he's not signed or that he's still out there? Yeah, I, th I think I've expressed that countless times that I'm, I'm surprised. And, and I, you know, I, was, I was, had a little exchange with Albert Breer, you know, who's a good friend. He's a great guy. Um, earlier because he had written an article, you know, nameless, faceless execs of, you know, nameless, faceless teams talking about, oh, I didn't like him coming out of college. I didn't like him. And it's like, wow, so you're still, you're, you're such a bad exec that you're judging a kid off of, off of college tape when the kid's been to, to Super Bowls and won NFC championships and been to multiple NFC championships and you're still talking about his college tape. Um, so I think that's the part where, where I don't get it. You know, you got guys who, who are who are so judge, quick to judge and critique, oh, it's not because of the anthem, it's because he can't play. But, you know, Mark Sanchez played in, in Chip's, Chip's system and then got a job after. They're like, oh, who else can play in that system? Well, he was just in that system and then played in another system and got a job. Um, I don't think, I think they're looking for excuses to, to keep him out of the league and they're finding them. You know, you look for excuses, you can find them. Um, there was a great saying about excuses are like something on your body, you know, everybody has one. No, no, Mike shared it with us when it happened. I think it happened a week ago uh, or so. Um, and he was just looking for a way to, to thinking about what he, what he should do in this situation because nowadays, regardless of if you're in the wrong or you're right, you're judged. Um, and he asked, he asked myself and he asked Doug what he should do in a situation and, and we gave our advice and, you know, he, he, did, he did as he did. I think he talked to a lot of people, but you know we had we had our talks with him about how he should word it and how he should approach the situation because, you know, even when you're the victim, you're you're still criticized. You got to try to try to give him devil's advocate perspective, and um, I think he took all perspectives into account when he with everything he did. Do you think society gets to a point where uh, instances like this aren't commonplace? I pray that it does. I pray that society gets to a place where where this is this is a rarity. This is obscene. This is outrageous and the entire world is outraged by it. Um, I think there are some people that are outraged at it. 
you know, there are, there are a number of people that are that are shaking their heads, but a lot of people are quietly outraged by it. They're they're silently outraged by it. They're, mm, you know, just shake their head. Um, not a lot of people are actually doing things that that people would do as if it happened to you. You know, if it happened to them, there's a lot of actions they would take. But if it didn't happen to them, a lot of people just shake their head, and that's what's unfortunate. You know, a lot of people are silent about the things that go on in society. You know, people walk around with Nazi flags and, and people shake their head, but they silently do it. You know, nobody combats it. And the people that do, they're, they're you know, they're frowned upon. You don't, you don't do anything. You don't, there are many ways to, to, to destroy violence and, and racism and, and fascism and bigotry. And I don't think silence is one of them. Do you think that this is going to happen in your lifetime? I pray it does. But um, I'm sure all good people hope for this. I, I, I hope that my kids don't have to deal with it. Um, but I will make them aware of it. Mike mentioned victims of these shootings and haven't had the opportunity to speak after this. How important say, say that one more time. Mike mentioned victims of other police shootings who were killed in incidents with police, I should say. Um, how important was it for Mike to come up and acknowledge what happened? I think it was incredibly important because I think there's a sentiment that goes around that it doesn't happen. You know, you're rich, you're wealthy, you're, 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 you know, you're famous, you have notoriety. You, there's no way it happens to you, and it does, and it does, and it's, you know, and it's no. I guess it's nobody's fault. It's, it's poor training by, by, for some. Um, you know, every individual is different because I've met. I've met great, great officers. You know, you meet, you, you have good conversations with. You know, you got. I've gotten tickets and, and walked away with a smile. You know, it's like, oh, that, that's a great guy. It sucks that I got a ticket, but you know. And then you have incidents where you run into people that you 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 keep your wits about you. You know, you keep everything. You keep your hands visible. You 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 know, certain people. I don't know if it's bad training or or you know if it's you know something that went on in their childhood or what it is, but. Um, Every situation's different. Every individual is different. Um, but something needs to change. Thank you.